diversify the soil food web, the microbial community with above and below ground plant diversity. And of course, there's so many ways to do that. This is uh, the forest garden. Um, my wonderful late husband enticing me to leave Montana and come to California said, oh, Helen, you can have an acre of the lower orchard and you can play with your some of your research ideas. So uh, in every other row, uh, I grew annual crops and some perennials, uh, and I'll talk about this in detail later on for in one of the evening sessions, I think. But there it is. We have the diversity of deep perennial roots. We have some uh, uh, shrubby roots with things like artichokes, and then we have the annual roots. We have some strawberries back there, so some low-growing perennial roots. But then here's just a regular old garden. Uh, this was my first uh, garden at, uh, at the farm in uh, Eastern Oregon. And you can see, well, maybe you can't see. There's just lots and lots of, of diversity. Oh, look, there's some bare soil. I'm getting ready to seed something. But mostly, what do you see? Green. Green, a ground cover. And, and so we have diversity above ground. What do you think is going on below ground? Yes, and more importantly, we're seeing different root architecture, aren't we? We're seeing things that go deep, we're seeing things that are fibrous, and as well as, and why is root architecture important? So the deeper taproots can pull up minerals and bring them up yeah. to the top, especially if you top and drop the shallower roots. Think Good like, range. perfect, think like an earthworm. What, what would you want if you were an earthworm? You want, you want the soil to be broken up, you want oxygenation, so you want some of the deeper roots. So, but not only do we want root architecture, we want different species because we want different root exudates. And we're going to ha look at some microbes tonight, and tomorrow we're going to meet them and see what they do. And we're going to see that the different root exudates allow colonization of a microbiome. Everyone knows what I mean by a microbiome. It's kind of a, a new term, a new cool term now, of species-specific species-specific microbial symbionts. Symbionts meaning an interaction between the plant and the microbe. Okay? We're going to talk more about this on Tuesday, a lot about this on Tuesday. But for now, we're just introducing it as part of our first principle. Then our second principle, disturb the soil as little as possible and create year-round refuges. So, so here is... Here is our, our, our living mulch in our orchard, and you can see, well, can anybody identify that blue pl flowered plant? Chicory, excellent. And red clover, so we have blooming things, we have seeding grasses, so we have refuges. That's what I mean. We have a, a sequential bloom and food sources, and we, have, and we have just cover where these insects and spiders can be. Oh, and speaking of those spiders, here we have, it kind of looks a little funny here, but it's wonderful. This is a kabocha squash, and it's hard to see because what's on it? Web. A spider web, spider. and that's one of those incredible wolf spider predators. How cool is that? Do you see that in many vegetable fields? It might scare some people to see their, their, their food encased in spider webs, huh? <laughs> but to me, it's glorious. So number three is the one that I, we're going to develop a song by the end of the week for, right? Keep a growing root in the soil year round. And, and there's a couple of pictures of, um, of the, my farm in Montana and uh, the orchard in uh, California, actually, and how we did it, with, which is this is a, a purely legume, um, all red clover. And this is a, a species mix of about 25 different species, grasses, legumes, and weeds. And this is uh, later on, it, after the legumes started naturally 
moving to a more diverse perennial living mulch with legumes and grasses and, and weeds. So why do we care about these living roots? Really, why is Helen making such a big deal about it? Especially looking out there underneath all this snow, why does she care? Well, as we mentioned, it really is one of the major food sources for our soil microbial community. If you have hard soil, maintaining the living roots helps to get rid of the hard pan, maintain soil structure. To me, I, I always believed it, and the last five years of data, uh, on-farm data, shows me that it, it, it is the key, the key to maintaining soil fertility. And we will, we will talk about this a, a lot on Tuesday. It also helps, as, as Robin was saying, to bring up nutrients that have gone below the, the root zone, and of course protects water quality and allows us to grow our own fertilizer. So these year-round roots are creating habitat for all of these things that are going on. This is just a sneak preview of what we're going to look at in detail on Tuesday. What's going on and how do we as gardeners and farmers I'm trying to think of another word than manage, but how do we work with all of these microbial interactions with our plants so that we can facilitate them or improve them? Because we, we all know about nitrogen fixation, right? Anybody not know about nitrogen fixation? That's a bad thing, because now nobody's going to admit it. So nitrogen fixation, legumes, fix nitrogen with a symbiont, with a, a partner in their roots, a, a bacteria called rhizobium. We'll see a picture of him tomorrow. And then the nitrogen is made available to the whole system and to the plant root. We also have are disease suppressive organisms for biological control. Uh, they produce all kinds of, of uh, uh, toxins, and, and they also actually just eat, or an, they're antagonistic to some of the bad guys. We have antibiotics. We have, oh my goodness, they create growth uh, uh, substances, so uh, growth regulation for plants to make plants grow better. So lots and lots is going on here. We, of course, also have some bad things. We, we can have disease organisms. Uh, I mean, we do. It's part of the whole system. But this is what happens with the roots. Out here where there's no roots, does it happen? It can because there are free-living microorganisms, but it doesn't happen either as rapidly, and some things actually don't occur. Some microorganisms only function in association with roots. <laughs>